I don't know, do I need an introduction? Let's just start all in. Hi, I'm Jackson Bird, and today I want to talk about doubt. One of my favorite topics, <laughs> apparently. Uh, but specifically today about doubting your transness, whether it's when you are figuring out your gender, deciding if you want to transition in some form, or even doubting things after you transition, after you've been living in your affirmed gender for a while, because, spoiler warning, that doubt still happens. Sometimes. I mean, maybe not for people who don't have anxiety or don't overthink things as much as I do. I can only speak from my own perspective, but I mean, honestly, I would be surprised if most people don't feel some sort of doubt at some point, even after they've gotten to a place of comfort in their transition, whatever that means for them. I also want to talk today about when doubt is totally natural and when you should listen to that doubt as a warning. But before we dive in, let's take a minute to talk about today's sponsors, you guessed it, my pals at Dollar Shave Club. Even if you're doubting some bigger picture questions about your life, Dollar Shave Club can build up your confidence by helping you look, feel, and smell your best. Especially Especially in some of those earlier phases of coming out and transitioning, buying hygiene products can be really stressful. Like you gotta go to the store and figure out which products are right for you while feeling the eyes of everyone on you wondering what they're thinking about you and your gender and the products that you're picking out. It's a mess. But Dollar Shave Club cuts out all of that by offering top shelf products that do amazing things and are delivered right to you on your own schedule. Shower products, oral care products, hair products, skin products, and obviously shaving products. Basically, if you have a buy Body, they've got you covered. And now since I've talked them up a lot, you're all probably familiar with their shave, shower, and oral care products. You might have even tried them out for yourselves. Well now, Dollar Shave Club is offering a chance to try their facial cleanser, for those of you who have been curious, along with their popular shave starter set for just $5. So in that $5 shave starter set, you will get the executive razor handle, a cassette of four razors, a one ounce tube of Dr. Carver's shave butter, perfect size for travel, and a one ounce tube of their Hawaiian ginger face cleanser, which I'm really digging right now because it smells like summertime in a tube and then on my face, which is great. Because I'm totally amped about summer starting right now, so I want everything in my life to just be summery. So if any of that sounds as good to you as it smells to me on this side of the camera, you can join the club with one of their starter sets for just $5. After that, the restock box ships with regular sized products at regular price. You can get this exclusive deal at dollarshaveclub.com slash jacksonbird. Link on the screen and down in the description box. All right, so we've taken a step in the right direction for our physical confidence thanks to Dollar Shave Club, but let's get back to talking about our mental, emotional confidence or lack thereof. So I remember back when I had pretty much figured out that I was a trans guy, but I was still battling a lot of doubt about being like an actual binary man. You know, whether I would feel this way forever and ergo if certain parts of medical transition would be right for me. And sometimes I even felt doubt about being trans at all. Figuring out your gender and what, if anything, to do about the dysphoria you may feel is a huge undertaking. You are challenging everything you've ever been told about yourself, about your place in the world, and especially for those of us who grew up with less representation than some people have now, challenging everything you were ever taught about gender and gender roles and the permanency of gender. Tackling all of that on such a deep personal level, and usually all alone, is massive. It's complex, it is scary, it's all-consuming, and it is completely understandable why you might feel doubt throughout that process. It's why so many trans people push those feelings away, and why so many of us struggle with mental illness, substance abuse, and self-harm, because when you are realizing that everything you've ever known is different than what you thought, and that to move forward towards a hope of happiness will require not just accepting that yourself, but educating most people you ever encounter about it, all while revealing a very vulnerable side of yourself, one that much of society has lampooned and ridiculed for eons, that is some traumatic stuff to deal with. So if you're feeling doubt, if you're feeling worse since you figured out you might be trans and not better, think first about all of that, not about it being a sign that you're not trans. Think about how much you're already putting yourself through and give yourself some credit. It is probably going to get worse before it gets better because you've been burdened with knowledge. You have to work through it before you can make it to the other side of the woods and get to the light and solutions and feel the positive effects of them. Now, could some of the negative feelings be a sign that you're not trans? Well, I mean, yeah. 
That's part of what makes it so hard. It is a very real possibility. I do tend to think though that if you are thinking about it so much and you are so intensely distressed by it all, like you are probably trans or non-binary in some way, the question then becomes, what are you gonna do about it? Are you gonna tell people? Declare a new name or gender, change your wardrobe, get a new haircut, work towards medical transition, or just keep it all to yourself. It all depends what is right for you, what will help you feel contentment and happiness, what will help you feel affirmed in your gender. And figuring all that out, answering those questions, is not easy. So even when I was pretty sure that I was a guy and that I wanted to move forward with starting hormones, I was nervous to tell people because I was scared that they wouldn't believe I was a man, that they wouldn't see the man inside of me. It's a weird way to say it, but they wouldn't see me as a man. And part of that, honestly, is because it was true. I mean, especially outside of queer circles, although like, God bless the queer trans people in my life who affirmed me as a man, even pre-T with my long hair. But apart from awesome people like that, I knew most people weren't seeing me as a man. And truthfully, like, I wasn't either. I mean, I was trying to, and I felt it deep inside on a certain level, but on another level, I knew that having not lived in the world as a man before, I didn't know what it meant to be a man. I couldn't confidently tell people that's who I currently was because I didn't feel confident that I currently was, only that I should be and one day would be. But there aren't like aspirational pronouns you can use. So I used he, him pronouns even when they felt weird at first and said that I was a man even though I didn't quite feel it yet because I had to confidently display that for other people so that they could start believing me as a man, even while I internally was still getting used to it myself. And yeah, some of them took longer than I did, which is when it gets weird and hurtful and is why we talk about respecting people's name, and pronouns, and gender, even if your concept of their affirmed gender doesn't match how you see them, that doesn't matter. I wanna make it clear here that I'm not defending anyone who refuses to see and refer to someone as their affirmed gender. I'm just saying that from the individual trans and non-binary experience, it's okay if you don't see yourself as your gender just yet. And it can be hard to start feeling like your gender when the world doesn't see you that way. Like you can be absolutely assured in your gender, have been for years, but if you regularly experience other people questioning your gender or misgendering you, then it makes perfect sense for that doubt to creep into your own psyche. It does not mean that you're not who you know yourself to be. It just means that some other people suck. There are a lot of parts of the trans movement, which I, fully support, but which I think can trip people up when they're questioning. You know, we fight against language like born a girl, instead saying female assigned at birth, because we want people to know that this is who we've always been, even if we didn't exactly have the words for it, that we didn't have a choice in the gender that was thrust upon us. And we talk about transition not being a choice because for some people it really is life and death and because we are fighting for dignity, accessibility, and financial coverage for medical transition related procedures. So we need cis people to know that it's not just some frivolous cosmetic thing. But those types of narratives can sometimes be disappointing or confusing to a trans person who maybe hasn't felt this way their whole life who might be happy to refer to their childhood as being the gender they were assigned at birth. For someone who knows that transition will really, really help them feel less dysphoric or depressed, but wouldn't necessarily say that it's life or death. For any trans person whose narrative is a little different from the one that we most commonly hear. What I'm trying to say is that there's a lot of ways that we talk about things that I believe we need to in order for the larger public to take us more seriously, but those same things can be damaging to questioning folks within the community when they aren't presented with any nuance. We don't like admitting that we ever doubted our gender because it feels like an invitation for other people to doubt who we are. But in not talking about it, we sometimes do a disservice to people who are questioning their gender right now. You know, when I hear trans people say that they never once doubted their gender and that as soon as they heard hormone treatment existed, they had to have it and they've never looked back. I mean, good for them? And maybe that's mostly true, but even the most confident of them must have doubted a little bit. At least like late at night when you can't sleep and that voice in the back of your head asks, what are you doing? Spews all the stereotypical misunderstandings we always hear from the rest of society. You're making a mistake. You're ruining your body. You'll regret it soon. No one will ever love you. We're fed all of these ideas and for none of them to ever enter your brain when you're at your most vulnerable is a little inconceivable to me. It is natural for you to worry about things that you know in more rational moments are not true. I mean, even now, several years into transition and very comfortably and happily living as a man, 
I experience doubt, especially when I hear trans people's stories that aren't like my own. You know, I see trans guys who are so much more masculine than me. I hear people talk about the different ways they knew they were trans, and I wonder if my realization took too long is somehow less valid. For a group of people who have historically been shoved out of the mainstream eye and continues to lack the kind of education about our identities and our bodies that cis people are afforded implicitly and explicitly through academic, social, and cultural venues, it makes sense why we would think that there is only one or only a few ways for us to be who we are. But that's simply not true. We are as complex and as varied as cis people, if not way more. But since we don't get to see that, since we're not taught that without seeking it out, it's understandable that we would doubt our feelings when they don't match up to the few examples that we're able to find. So don't be so hard on yourself if you're doubting your gender. It does not necessarily mean that you're not trans or that you're not the gender that you are. That said, doubt can be a useful vehicle for self-reflection. And when it comes to making big life or medical decisions with transition, there are times you might really want to listen to that doubt. For example, not being thrilled about some changes from hormones is normal. Like, in a perfect world, would I be fighting acne at almost 30 and have a freaking hairy butt? No! But I love my deeper voice, my facial hair when it's coming in eventually, kinda sorta. I like how balanced and right testosterone makes me feel, and I mean, heck, I even love some of the things that are not so great because they make me feel like a man. No one, cis, trans, or otherwise, likes all parts of puberty. You cannot pick and choose the changes that you'll get from hormones. And if you're not ready to face that, Hormone replacement therapy might not be right for you, at least not yet. Or think about starting to use a new name and pronoun. That can feel super weird, especially from people who use your old name and pronouns before. It's like you can feel their awkwardness like a sixth sense. You might even misgender yourself or use your old name in your head. All of that is normal. But if the new name and pronouns feels even worse than your old ones, that might be a sign. The thing is, like, apart from all of the society-fueled things and the intensity of questioning gender itself, part of why doubt is so much more common to the trans experience than we usually talk about is because it it is tough to figure out when you're just nervous about things, when you're absorbing other people's doubt, and when something is actually wrong for you. And that is why seeking out as many trans people's stories as possible is really important. It's why talking to other trans people and sharing your times of doubt together is super important. And why talking to a therapist is so important if you can. I mean, you might think that there is nothing they could bring up that you haven't thought of before, which is probably true, but what they can do is stop your thought spirals and challenge them help you see when it's just normal doubt and when it might be a sign. Not being a therapist myself, that is about all I can offer you today, but in that spirit, what are some times that you've doubted your transness or your gender, and how did you overcome it? Leave your thoughts in the comments below because, like I said, sharing these vulnerabilities with each other in the trans and non-binary community can really help us see that we're not alone and find some solutions together. And if you liked what I had to say here about doubt, if you wanna hear a little bit more about my personal experiences with doubt, might I recommend 200 published pages of self-doubt coming to a bookstore near you September 24th. Uh, yeah, really, that is mostly what the book is about. I mean, there's also stuff like awkward childhood stories, actual trans education, and rants about Pottermore, but it's mostly self-doubt, as is my marketing strategy, apparently. Anyways, link on screen and below to pre-order my book, Sorted. Shout out to my patron Nick for suggesting this topic. If you want to become a patron, be a part of our patron community, you can do that at patreon.com slash jacksonbird. Thank you again to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this video. Remember, if you want to get that $5 shave starter set deal, you can go to dollarshaveclub.com slash jacksonbird. That is it for today. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.